Hello and welcome to Talking Golf with Gary. This week, the dynamic Gary will introduce you to all kinds of topics pertinent to this past week of golf. He'll give you some tidbits of information as what's coming up and take you on a tour around the world for all of the golfing highlights. Sit back and enjoy Talking Golf with Gary. And hello and welcome to Talking Golf with Gary. This is episode number 162. Uh, for May the 7th, 2012, and I hope everybody had a great week out there and really enjoyed the golf. Uh, uh, the nicer weather is starting to come to the northeast, and people are getting out. I'm still a little hampered by uh, a little knee problem and a hip problem, but we're working on that. So, But um, people are getting out and having a great time on a golf course, and so should you. You should have a a good time and uh, uh, hit the ball around and uh, maybe that's what Tiger should do too. Tiger should just go out and hit the ball around instead of trying to uh, be so robotic and get his swing down perfectly. Too many swing changes, too many coaching, too many people telling him what to do. That's what the problem with Tiger is. He's uh, uh, looking too robotic and uh, didn't even make the cut at the Wells Fargo this week. It's, he, he hasn't done that in a long, long time, and uh, really uh, can't see him catching Nicholas at this pace. He could change, turn it around. He could turn it around and get back on a winning track, but it is going to be very difficult because he looks like a lost, lost player right now and uh, don't know how long it's going to uh, take to get it, uh, get it back and get back in a winning move uh, movement and and uh, get everything going right so um what are your thoughts about that you can email me at uh, talkinggolf at gmail.com or call the uh voicemail hotline 516-619-6341 with anything uh, anything at all comments questions whatever anything you'd like to uh, ask the show and and while you're doing that thinking about Tiger and what he can do Think about and let us know who your picks are for the U.S. Open. Yes, the U.S. Open is coming. It's only uh, uh, roughly uh, five or six weeks away. So get your picks in and we'll read them on the air and uh, see uh, who can do the best job of picking the winner at the U.S. Open uh, this coming up this uh, June. And, of course, this is Players Week now. The Players' Championship takes place this week as uh, uh, the first unofficial, um, not the first, we had the Masters ready, but it is the uh, uh, an unofficial major tournament. The uh, uh, players really like this tournament, and uh, it has a very good field and is a good test and, and uh, a good stepping stone for somebody uh, to win this tournament. And uh, we'll see who's who's going to be uh, up. We have one pick already uh, for uh, this week's uh, Players Championship, and we'll read that a little bit later. later. But now it's time to uh, recap the uh, week in golf action. And again, we had another exciting week. As yet, another week on a PGA Tour means another playoff as Ricky Fowler has his long-awaited first PGA Tour win in the Wells Fargo Championship. He took that in a playoff. Fowler, billed as one of the rising American stars, delivered a clutch shot on the 18th hole in a playoff for a four-foot birdie to beat U.S. Open champion Rory McIlroy and DA points on Sunday in the Wells Fargo Championship. 23-year-old Fowler won in his 67th PGA Tour start as a pro. He already has become one of the most popular players on the tour as, uh, you know, the kids emulate him wearing those uh, very colorful outfits that he wears. And uh, he was in his usual orange uh, outfit for Sunday. This has become a bit of a tradition, much like um, Tiger's uh, red shirt and black pants. Uh, he, uh, Fowler likes the bright orange. <laughs> and he closed on Sunday with a 3-under-69 and got into a playoff 
when Points made his uh, first bogey of the final round on the uh, last hole. And what a time to, uh, you know, uh, to get a, uh, a bogey, and that's uh, on the final hole of the tournament. But he did cause the playoff, and Fowler uh, just hit a magnificent second shot on the uh, uh, playoff hole and stuffed it in within about four feet, and everybody else had gone long and wide, and Fowler put it at four feet, put the putt home, and uh, celebrated his first uh, PGA Tour victory. The only other win as a pro for Fowler was last year in South Korea when he beat McElroy again. So could we see, or could we be seeing a uh, future... Uh, rivalry emerging here as the two 23-year-olds, um, Fowler and McElroy, are going at after each other. And uh, this could be a, a Tiger Phil thing, a Arnie Jack thing. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, it, it seems uh, something to be uh, very interesting to keep an eye on and watch. And, of course, McElroy did return to number one in the world. And... Uh, We'll see how far he can hold, how long he can hold on to that post as uh, we've had a number of rotating number ones lately. And Freddie Funk birdied the final hole to edge Tom Lehman and win the Champion Tours Insperity Championship. Tied with one hole left, Funk hit his approach on number 18 to two feet. Lehman missed his birdie putt. In fact, Fock, Funk. And Funk tapped in for his seventh victory on a 50-and-over tour, first since 2010. He finished with a 5-under-67 for a 14-under-202 total. The 55-year-old Funk added one more good memory at the uh, Woodlands uh, Country Club, where he won the Houston Open in 1992 for his first win on the regular tour. He met his second wife, Sharon, at a post-tournament event that year, and Sharon was the first to run onto the green and congratulate him on Sunday after his latest victory. Lehman closed with a 68, and season points leader Michael Allen, who was going for his third straight win, finished five shots back after shooting a 71. Francesco Molinari shot a 7-under-65 Sunday to win the Spanish Open by three strokes, the first Italian to capture the European Tour event. Molinari finished at an 8-under-280 in the 100th edition of the tournament for his third victory on a tour. He entered the final round four strokes behind uh, leader England's Simon Dyson, who shot a 76 and ended up tied for 12th place. Molinari was followed by Spaniards Pablo Larrazabal, Alejandro Canizares, and Denmark's Soren Jeltsin. Matteo Monacero was tied for 7th. The Italian will have to wait until Monday's rankings to see uh, if he has moved the back inside the top 60 to qualify for the U.S. Open next month. Manasaro arrived in Seville, ranked 64th, but needed to finish 7th on his own to be assured of qualifying. And Pon Nung uh, Fatlan of Thailand shot a 6-under-67 to win the LPGA Tours Brazil Cup on Sunday, four shots ahead of Amy Hung of Taiwan. This is a 36-hole uh, exhibition-type event. Uh, not, a, not an official LPGA event. Fatlam had six birdies and no bogeys to finish at 13 under for the tournament at the Inanhanga Golf Club in Rio de Janeiro. Five of her birdies came on the front nine. Hung had nine birdies and a bogey for an eight under 65, the low round of the day. Paul Karima eagled the par five ninth hole but gave it back with two bogeys on the back nine and shoot 69 and finished at eight under for the tournament, tied for third. Karen Ictcher of France entered the final round tied for the lead with Fatlum at seven under, but shot even par to finish tied for fourth. Former Georgia golfer Hudson Swafford banked the shot off the pin and into the 18th hole from a bunker 30 feet away for a birdie capping a new course round record 
and winning the Stadium Classic at UGA on Sunday. Swafford birdied his final three holes to wrap up a record nine under par 62 and finish with a 72 hole 17 under. His tee shot on number 18 landed in the rough just to the right of the fairway and his second shot hit the lip of the bunker and rolled back into the sand. His final shot from about uh, 30 feet from the pin cleared the bunker and hit low on the pole and dropped in. Luke List, winner of last week's South Georgia Classic in Valdosta, threatened Swafford's lead but hit a tree and botched a shot out of the rough to bogey number 18 and finished the day with a 6 under 65 and, and finished in a tie for second with Lee Jansen with a 72 hole 16 under 268. And that was on the uh, Nationwide Tour uh, event that took place in Georgia this week. And we're going to take a break and be back after a few of these messages. For all the listeners of Talking Golf with Gary, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 14-day trial to give you a chance to check out their service. Over 75,000 titles to choose from in many different categories, including science fiction, mysteries, biographies, sports, computers, you name it, they have it. To download your free audiobook today, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Talking Golf with Gary. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash Talking Golf with Gary for your free audiobook today. You can now hear our show while on the go with Stitcher Smart Radio. On demand, news, talk, and more on your mobile phone. The latest episode is always available for you. No syncing needed and no memory or storage wasted. Available for your iPhone, Android phone, WebOS phone, or your BlackBerry. Downloading is easy. Go to Stitcher.com or check out your app store. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Milwaukee Brewers and National League Central News and Notes, BrewtownSports.Potomatic.com. This is Barry from Mets Musings. Be sure to tune in weekly to Gary and myself at Mets Musings at Potomatic.com and also on iTunes. And we're back. And uh, as I said earlier, if you'd like to be a part of the show, you can by dropping us an email at uh, uh, talkinggolf at gmail.com or uh, giving us a call at our uh, comment hotline, voicemail hotline, 516-619-6341. And uh, every week we do this show, and you can get it at tgwg.podomatic.com or on iTunes, or we are on Stitcher Smart Radio. You can get that app at Stitcher Smart Radio slash Talking Golf with Gary. Or uh, tune in, or we're all over the place. Spreaker, SoundCloud, and if you'd like to watch a video of this podcast, that's available at Talking Golf Vid. It's Talking Golf V I D. dot blogspot. dot com. And in other news, as we are recording this, Phil Mickelson will be inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. Uh, along with four others taking an undisputed place among the best who ever played the game. His 42 wins worldwide include three Masters, a PGA Championship, and two World Golf Championships, and probably should have included one or two U.S. Opens. Uh, also being inducted tonight is two-time major winner Sandy Lyle, three-time U.S. Women's Open champion Hollis Stacy, writer Dan Jenkins, and a British broadcaster, Peter Alice. So congratulations to all of them and Phil and uh, all of the others for uh, getting put into the Hall of Fame. And, of course, uh, uh, you have to be 40 years of old uh, of age 
and uh, have some other requirements as far as victories and mages and stuff like that to uh, get in the hall and uh, Phil uh, was eligible and voted in this time so congratulations to uh, Phil Mickelson and Arnold Palmer, here's something we haven't heard in a while. Arnold Palmer curled in a 25-foot putt on the 18th hole, raised his right hand, and acknowledged the massive cheering gallery with a thumbs-up s- sign and his trademark smile. Jack Nicholas gave Palmer a hearty handshake. Gary Player offered a pat on the back, a fitting end to a memorable day for the golf greats. Nicholas Palmer Player made up a threesome in a nostalgic 18-hole exhibition round Saturday in conjunction with the second round of the Champion Tours Insperity Championship, and that threesome took home the biggest trophy, shooting 11 under par. Lee Trevino played in the threesome ahead in the nine-man scramble. Miller Barber, Dylan January, David Graham, Gene Littler, and Dave Stockton also participated. And that must have been quite a thrill for all the people there to see uh, that uh, th- uh, the big three, the threesome uh, of uh, Nicholas, Palmer, and Playa playing together. And who knows that uh, their ages uh, how, and with their businesses and everything else. Um, I think Jack Nicholas says he hasn't really played any competitive golf in a num- quite a few years and uh, was surprised that he hit the ball as well as he did. Uh, but uh, it must have been a Big, big thrill to see those three again. Uh, No matter how old they get, it's just uh, great to see them out on a course. And researchers have found evidence that a lost English colony from the 16th century may sit beneath the Arnold Palmer-designed golf course at Scotch Hall Preserve. According to a recent story in the Seattle Times, researchers at the British Museum in London acting at the request of a group of North Carolina historians and archaeologists, have found a symbol hidden on an ancient map that could show where members of the English colony established on Roanoke Island in 1587 settled. The Virginia Pars map was created by members of Sir Walter Riley's Roanoke Colony Expeditions of 1584 to 1590, which was the first attempt to establish an English colony in the New World and is said to be unusually accurate for its time. On the map created by the leader of the 1587 colony expedition, John White, were two small patches which were commonly used by artists at the time to make alterations to the original. One of the patches was in an area the settlers had explored and where some historians think they might have moved. When the British Museum officials put the map on a simple light table, they found a large symbol under one of the patches that appeared to show the location of a fort roughly at or near what is now the Scotch Hall Preserve. Earlier efforts to match pottery recovered from the area to the correct time period also have produced positive results, researchers have said. <laughs> so, maybe they're going to rip up the golf course, do you... Uh, to see about this, but uh, I thought you'd find that a little interesting, a little off the beaten path. And we're going to move on. Happy birthday! And on our birthdays today, uh, first one coming up is the May 9th. And that'll be Champions Tour player Jim Dent, who turns 73 years young on uh, May the 9th. And the other birthdays for this, this week is on May the 12th. And we have Jim Furyk and Mike Weir on that day. And both are turning 42. So congratulations, uh to both uh, uh, Furyk and Mike Weir, and as well, as well as Jim Dent, on their upcoming birthdays. And that's the birthdays for this week, and we'll move on to the calendar. Now it's time to do the calendar. Now it's time to do the calendar. Oh, let's sing the calendar. Now it's time to do the calendar. 
Well, the calendar is a little thin this week with the uh, Players' Championship taking place. It's almost, as I said, it's uh, uh, it's sort of like an unofficial major. So uh, on the PGA Tour, we have, of course, the uh, Players' Championship. And K.J. Choi will be the uh, defending uh, champion there. And uh, let's see, the LPGA Tour is off. The Champions Tour is off. The Nationwide Tour is off. And the European Tour is uh, playing the Madeira Islands Open. And Michael Huey is the defending champion uh, there. And and that's, that's it. That's it for the week. Um, not much on the calendar for next week. So, uh, boy, next week's show is really going to be short. Not much to report on, except, uh, we'll probably have a lot to report on, on the, uh, the uh, players because the players is just, uh, a fun championship with the 17th hole, the Island hole. And, um, There'll be a lot to talk about, so we'll talk about that next week. And don't forget to get your emails in for the uh, U.S. Open pick. Oh, and speaking of picks uh, and uh, the Players' Championship, our good friend Jerry from Long Island is picking Hunter Mahan to win the uh, Player Championship. Hunter's been uh, having a very good year so far, and uh, Jerry's going to ride that uh, horse and see what happens. So, uh uh, Hunter Mayhan is Jerry's pick. And, and again, if you'd like to get a pick in for the U.S. Open, because you have some time, please send it in to uh, TalkingGolf at gmail.com and uh, get those picks in early, and we'll read them on the air. And that's going to wrap it up for this week. So uh, enjoy the, uh, the uh, players next week. And I'd like to thank all of our listeners and uh, even some viewers for uh, watching and listening to uh, Talking Golf with Gary. And we'll be back next week with another episode. So until then, have a great week. We'll see you then.